Welcome to Real Talk with me, your host, Sima. Today on the show, we're going to be looking at three major aspects. Firstly, entrepreneurship, branding, and marketing. With me in the studio is Blessed. Welcome, Blessed. Thank you, MC. Um, Blessed, I would like you to start by telling us what is entrepreneurship all about? What is your take on entrepreneurship? Um, entrepreneurship is the art of taking an idea to fruition. In other words, it's an act of thinking of something either as a product or as a service that you can offer to a market for a reward. It may be in the form of selling a product like ground nuts, offering a service like plumbing, and things like that. Oh, wow. So entrepreneurship is all about creating an idea and taking that idea to a targeted audience in a nutshell. Yes. You need to know what you are good at. You know, if you are a builder, you can use that building skill to become an entrepreneur or a business person in that particular field of expertise that you are in. So before I take up the idea of wanting to become an entrepreneur, I need to identify what is it that I want to go into. Precisely. You need to know your key strengths. You need to identify who you are. What is it that you are good at? And you exploit that for a financial benefit. So entrepreneurship, it's all about taking an idea, exploiting it, taking it to the general public for financial benefits. Exactly, you are right. Can you highlight to us, can you explain to us the importance, the impact of entrepreneurship to the African economy as a whole? To begin with, um, entrepreneurship, the results of it brings food to the table. You know. Africa has been ridden by poverty for a very long time. But the more entrepreneurs we have, uh, the more we work towards poverty alleviation. It results in food on the tables of many. Uh, unemployment is also high. Entrepreneurship reduces unemployment because it will result in the creation of jobs to the majority of um, African, especially the youth who are just graduating from varsities or tertiary colleges and, and such other institutions. Uh, thirdly, uh, it contributes to the development of the nation. The informal sector in many African countries contributes a lot in terms of GDP or the gross domestic product of a country. Um, they are small businesses that are exporting to either Europe or America and it brings in the much needed uh, foreign currency to, to our African economies. Before you go, um, I have one last question for you. What will be your advice to the African youth who are looking at becoming entrepreneurs, who are looking at taking entrepreneurship and doing something out of, out of it? So what would you advise them? What would be your take on that? My advice would be um, know who you are, know your key strengths. There is something in you that you can do better than the next person. So exploit your strengths in terms of what it is that you can do. If you are good in marketing, you may think of coming up with a marketing or advertising agency. If you are good with your hands, you can actually do technical or trade work, like plumbing, like carpentry, you know, just exploit your key strengths. You know, there is always a need in what you can offer to the community. Somebody is looking at your skill and uh, it is that skill that can actually bring money into, into, into your bank account. Thank you so much, Blessed, for sharing with us and giving us such insightful information on entrepreneurship, the impact of entrepreneurship to the African economy as a whole, and what 
the youth of Africa need to know if they're considering becoming an entrepreneur. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having me, MC. Up next, we'll be talking to two amazing, young, beautiful, and talented African women who are not only business women but entrepreneurs. They'll be giving us their take on business startup, branding, and marketing. Stay tuned. With me on the show today, we have uh, Miss Lavinia Green and Miss Sam Kezulu. Welcome, ladies. I'd like to know your take on the following business startup. Thank you for Thank having you us, Marvel. Thank you for having us on the show. You're welcome. When starting off your business, the most, I think the most important first step that you need to take is to do your research. Once, and once you've established what it is that you are actually focusing on, you then go out into your branding and marketing and etc. But I will stick on research because I have seen or I have realized that without your research and, what, and knowing what is going on in the environment or in the communities <coughs> or in the actual um, business that you're doing, you end up uh, not knowing or not having the right direction or vision in where it is you want to go and where you want to take your brand or your company to which level you want to take it to. So it's very, very important for you to definitely make sure you've got the right research and the right research structures in place for that to happen. Just to edify to what uh, Ms. Lena was just saying, is that it's also important as a startup to identify what it is that you want to do. Because if you do not know what it is that it is that you want to do, then doing all the research, how is it going to help you? So it's important to know what you want to do, define it, and see whether is it in line with the person that you are. That's true. So Sam, can you saying that in a nutshell, before you can even go about doing your research, you need to identify that which you want to offer. Identify your product or your service. Once you've identified your product and service, then you cannot go into researching the industry to know what you will bring to the table. Because that once that is done, you actually now are equipped with the knowledge of saying, okay, fine, what's the first step that I need to do to make this that I want to do, whatever services I want, to I, want, I, I want to provide, or goods that I want to produce, how do I go about doing these? Where do I need to go to get the help that I need? Okay. How much financial uh, capital do I need to be able to reach my goal at the end of the day? What resources do I need? Is it only finance? Do I need land? Do I need employees? How many employees do I need? Who do I go to? Do I go to the government for assistance? What government resources are there for me that will assist me in getting my business out there and producing the services that I need? It's a combination of things. There's it, the list is endless. That is why also, once you've identified, then research comes in. Because through that research, then you're able to get to that niche to say, okay, fine, this is my starting point. This is how I'm going to get my business off the ground. Oh, wow. I believe, I believe we, we're touching some points that a lot of people would want to hear. And uh, we'll talk more after the break. I know what's going through your mind right now is wow, real talk with Sima. The concept real talk was all about bringing you fresh, insightful insight information about health, lifestyle, business, economy, and every other aspect of life. Stay tuned for more.
Now that the idea is conceived, the research has been done, what next? Well, branding and marketing has to be next. You need to formulate a brand, then have a know-how on how you're actually going to sell this brand out there. How are you going to reach your target audience so that they may know about what it is that you want to sell? I know a lot of people out there at home, they want to know, what is this brand that this woman is talking about? They've heard everybody in business talking about brand, 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 being brand conscious. Now, in my own understanding, I'll use my own words, I will not try and formulate some intellectual words. A brand is what identifies you as a business and what says to that person that's out there this is whoever brand it will conceptualize of it will consist sorry of your logo your logo needs to have colors and all of these elements they need to be in line with your offering let's say for instance you are a company that produces natural products uh, either for skin for hair or even organic uh, food commodities your brand colors they need to be in line with nature so that when people see green let's say for instance you use green when they see the color green they know this is organic this is natural because that's what we associate colors with and also your logo you can't be a company that um, is uh, producing, let's say for instance, apples, and then your logo becomes a lamp. Those two do not tell you. That's true. So a brand then starts from there. Then for a brand to actually become now a brand, it needs to also speak internally within your organization. So your letterheads are important. They need to be in line with your logo. You need to have a set standards to say, my logo is this, and this is where my logo is going to sit on my letterhead, and these are the details of everything. So basically, the all of this, it is internal and external through your business cards. You're also speaking to people with your business card, telling them about your company and your logo and your brand is there out there. All of these things, they sell your logo before you even go to marketing. You've already spoken about your logo internally and externally. To add to what Samke has said, you need to identify your targeted market, who they are, if they can afford your brand, and where you want this to go in terms of uh, your advertising. Uh, are you going to advertise through social media? Are you going to use television? Are you going to approach a magazine uh, house and ask them to uh, advertise in their magazines? There's quite a number of ways to market, but it is a very essential point that you market your brand the right way. And also, you have to have a website that feeds to your social media, which I will elaborate on. I'm speaking about your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, Snapchat, uh, FaceTime, uh, whichever way it is. There's so many upcoming ways uh, that all drive around the internet. So marketing is essential it's one of the most important points that we have to make sure you get right when starting off your business well these are actually very exciting times that we're living in for startup companies because marketing costs can actually be cut into half or actually even none you don't need to pay for social media to go and market and market your brand you don't need to pay a very high price of, um, of marketing. You can do this by utilizing your Facebook, your Twitter accounts, and your Instagram, having people like your page, run competitions in those pages, which will actually feed in flow of more people into your Make your page very, very exciting and interactive. That's how you're going to capture your audience, utilizing all these multimedia um, so, uh, platforms that we were just talking about. So in a nutshell, we're telling the viewers and our audience that marketing 
and branding is very, very vital Definitely. and essential yes. for every business startup. Definitely. And you cannot do without marketing. You cannot do without having a brand. How will people know about you? Mm -hmm. How will people buy your brand if you do not have all these elements together? Given the fact that we're living in a technological era, the internet has, has made it very easy, I can say, because you're talking about costless marketing definitely meaning that it's absolutely free we just need to know how mm -hmm. to go about using those media outlets to market our brands we'll talk more after the break Real Talk with Sima is a show that seeks to bridge the gap and narrow the line between our spiritual spirituality, our beliefs, and our societal norms. This is a show that brings you insightful information on how to go about your day-to-day -day activities and not undermining anything that you may believe or stand for. Stay tuned for more on this with Real Talk with Sima. Before we went on the art break, uh, we were talking about the importance of branding and marketing in a business startup. And the ladies spoke so much about the internet presence and so on and so forth. We looked about the social media pages and how we can market our companies for absolutely, if not basically free. So ladies, before I let you go, what would, you, what would be your word of advice to our audience and our viewers and people looking at starting up their businesses? What would be that one thing that you would leave them with? Well, for myself, I would say that be real. Be real with yourself. Um, do not go out there thinking it's a fairy tale. Starting a business is not a fairy tale. You will have sleepless nights. You will have moments of tears. You will have moments of joy. However, push forward. Yes. Um, I'll carry on from there. Uh, motivate yourself. Uh, pat yourself on the back for the achievements you make. Just look forward. Know where you're going and you will get it right. Samke just said, be real. Be real it is. Lavi is saying to me, be self-motivated. Celebrate milestones, have tenacity and keep pushing on matter how small the milestones are you have to celebrate thank you very much ladies thank you for having us on thank you so much. it was a pleasure thank you so much you've heard it all you've gathered all the insightful tips on how to make your business a success it's left on you now to go out there and make it happen thank you so much for watching real talk with Sima stay tuned for the next episode mm -hmm.